2004-2005, um, one of my classmates actually got into a, like an accident. A person was basically incarcerated. It was because of, you know, underage drinking. She wasn't 18 at the time, we were all seniors, but um, it caused a lot of grief for her and it caused a lot of grief for, you know, the, the family. You know, it's not a secret that underage drinking is a, is a, a major problem. It's a, it's a very major problem on the island. Um, based on my knowledge of working at DYA, Juvenile Corrections, uh, half the kids in there are in there and they wake up in there saying, oh my God, what did I do? And I shouldn't have drank. Too many people had died and too many young people's lives had been destroyed by, by drinking. Guam was one of the last jurisdictions that had 18-year-old drinking, and so I wanted to make sure that uh, we raised it. The number one cause of death for people my age was um, vehicular accidents, and a lot of that has to deal with underage drinking and driving while under the influence. For the research, I found that um, basically the number one intervention for bringing that number down is to raise the minimum legal drinking age. But the legislature was too concerned about the economic impact that uh, would the community would suffer as a result of the change in the drinking age. When the bill was up for um, debate, we all went and we provided testimonies on behalf of the bill in front of the legislation. Um, the entire organization actually went out when it was um, when it was being debated on and advocated for the passing of the bill. During one of the testimonies, I found out that. At the age of 18, your brain isn't really fully developed yet, and the, con the consumption of alcohol actually affects its development. And when the legislature saw that, there were young people who were willing to give up the privilege of drinking so that they would have to wait until they were 21. Then they realized that there were a number of responsible young people on this island that were willing to do the right thing and, and help their, their friends also do the right thing by increasing the drinking age. It empowered me that I could, you know, I could be a part of this movement, that I can be a part of the change. Earlier this year when we went out to uh, do inspections, just about every bar that we did cite did sell alcohol um, at one point to uh, an underage uh, person. We're just getting too many kids who end up incarcerated as a result of underage drinking. The kids at DYA, those that are incarcerated, express to us that they can go into a store and they could purchase a six pack of beer and they won't get carded. For some reason, their staff wasn't afforded or they weren't afforded the proper training and the correct training to help enforce underage drinking laws. The one thing that I have been thinking about doing was a social responsibility piece of legislation that anyone who provides alcohol to an underage person and they get drunk and they cause an accident, that you're going to be liable for that. We also don't want um, you know, uh, underage people to also injure the rest of the public or the public to um, you know, injure minors as well. And we also reduce the drinking hours on weekends from 4 until 2 o'clock. Some of them were saying, we don't mind you taking it to 21, but at least let us keep drinking until 4 o'clock. And I'm like, they get binge drinking between 2 and 4, and the runners and the bikers are going to be out there. I want my bikers and my runners to be out there and not have to face drunks that are going to wipe them out alongside of the road as they're running or they're biking. The fines that we have for violating these uh, laws are, are pretty uh, steep and they only escalate the more you do it. What happens is we get fined and we get closed down. So you lose out a lot of money. That's all lost if you get closed down. Being a trainer, part of my role is to reach out to the community and train different establishments on how to properly serve alcohol as well as how to properly enforce the local laws. But would you sell her um, a, a can of beer? I mean, RES stands beverage. for Responsible Beverage Service. They're going to learn about the various consequences that their establishment can be 
fined with if they do not enforce the local laws and how to properly ask and check for identification or valid identification. They're also going to learn about the different alcohol limits with regards to like what is binge drinking, um, how much should they, should they be serving um, in any given hour of the evening for their consumers. So it's basically an array of really good education that's going to help their establishment to stay open and not get shut down. Our hope for the community is really that this is going to change the mindsets. And we know that it's not going to happen overnight, um, but we already do see those changes. We follow all the rules. I already train all our waitresses and our bartenders, my bar backs, to always, we always check everybody's ID once they open the door. RBS, it's designed and it's built to also protect establishment. We don't want their establishment to get shut down. We just want them to follow the laws. Many teenagers, they just want to live their life, you know, they just want to enjoy their life. The alcohol being thrown into the equation, you can mess up relationships with other people, you know. I have a lot of cousins that drink a lot, and when I went to parties and they, when there's alcohol involved, there's always going to be a fight after. Drama, drama, drama thing. When I look at that, I just look, say to myself, I do not want to be that. I started the Just Say No Dance crew. Uh, in DYA in 2008 and was asked to bring it out into the community so I did so. The vision and the mission of, of the Just Say No Dance Group is to help the kids stay out of trouble for starters. The whole purpose of it is to, to teach them and uh, help them stay and uh, stay clean. This group is trying to show that you could have fun without drinking. I actually treasure just seeing the members laugh a lot smile a lot because ever since they joined this group they even tell me that they smiled more than they did before. Being an, a dancer in Inanna Gafpagu makes me live an alcohol free life. It keeps my mind off all those negative things that people do. If we do, if we did drink alcohol and we're still in the group, it's like showing we're not even committed to our group. We don't drink, we don't smoke or anything. It's like when you're in the team, it's like you bond with them and it's just like you don't care to even think about those things at all. It makes me have a lot of fun promoting our culture. Alcohol free. I want to live life to its fullest instead of wasting time drinking and I, I can actually wait. Alcohol isn't everything. Like, you don't to have fun, you don't need alcohol. There's so much more There's so to much life. More. to bring the One Nation campaign into the Liberation Day Parade to let families know, let everyone know that when you have youth present, you know, there's no need to have alcohol in order to have fun. And so this is our third year in having One Nation present with the Liberation Day Parade. Our first year, we had 29 families sign up. And today, our third year, we have 35 families sign up. So we're really excited um, that we're seeing numbers grow every year and more families and organizations wanting to pledge alcohol free, wanting to have their chant be alcohol free. On the very first year, I just told my family that the, the boundaries are defined by one nation and that there should be no liquor. Well, nobody ever said that drinking alcohol makes things fun. I have a lot of fun and I don't drink. <laughs> I think you really enjoy and appreciate the true meaning of the parade if you're alcohol. This project is great. I really think it's really great. We've been participating in this parade for quite a while already, more than, gosh, as far as I remember when we were just little kids, so that's over 40 years. This is our first year signing up for the One Nation Pledge. During this time where alcohol is very uh, abundant, it's, it's really great that, that this program is here helping out, uh, especially where the kids is concerned because really alcohol is not good for anybody. Alcohol is a major issue on this island. I wish everybody else would wake up and see what's going on. I'd like for all of us to take responsibility for that. As parents, make sure that your children aren't drinking. It's our hope that 
the community is going to start taking responsibility for fostering the growth of our next generation. One Nation is basically this ideal that Guam can come together and basically show that we are an alcohol-free island. Culture here on the island and throughout the islands is not about alcohol. It's about the family, it's about the diversity that we have here. Alcohol is not part of our island culture. We can be something more than that and we are something that we can fight against it.